right, here we go. I'm gonna try and balance this in front of me without knocking it over. Okay, so as you guys are starting to come on, hello, Michelle. So I'll give it a couple of minutes here and uh, let you guys get set up, let myself get set up. This is obviously gonna be recorded so you can watch it again and then share it with your team. So I'm gonna be talking this morning. I'm only gonna spend probably about 10 minutes with you guys. Um, really quick and easy, just talking about how I set up my daily method of operation. Um, for me, I refer to it as kind of my, my blueprint and what's important to me and how I prioritize and then how I make it happen. Um, and then I'll show you an example of exactly what is on mine, how I write it out, and uh, why things are where they are. So your daily method of operation, I, I totally get how this can be overwhelming. I remember in the beginning when um, I was told by my business coach um, a few years ago that I really needed to have this schedule set in place. And for me, I had it in my mind that I had a schedule. You know, I just, my, my day kind of ruled me though. I wasn't really... Um, I wasn't setting things in place. I was letting things kind of just happen and then chasing after it and finding myself, you know, up till all hours of the night trying to get myself organized. And it was just such a spazzy way. Um, there was actually no simplicity in what I was doing. So I was told a couple of years ago that I needed to create this and I really only implemented it about a year ago. So for those of you that are feeling challenged and stretched by it, I totally understand you um, because I was there too. And so for me, a daily method of operation, it's not about becoming um, rigid with it and like dogmatic where, oh my goodness, if something that you had scheduled in doesn't end up happening as you thought it was going to, then your whole day is ruined. That for me is not how it flows. It's an outline. And I always say to people, you know, it, it's like writing in pencil as opposed to pen and having a really big eraser so that you have the opportunity to shift and change some things out. The flow of it wants to remain the same, the whole purpose behind it. So right now, everybody is trying to amp up all this energy with your teammates and with yourself to get to SC and SSC. And those of us that are SSC are trying to hit different club levels and get to QNMD. Um, and so in that, you have to have a plan. You have to have approach. You can't just get up every day and pull an affirmation card and do a meditation. All of that is part of it, but that can't be the thing that's fueling you. So for me, my DMO is on the wall behind me, that piece of paper down there. Um, I've actually got it pulled up on my computer. And I'm going to talk to you guys about why I do what I do. So the most important thing for me in the morning is that when I wake up, it's my time. Um, I get up early in the morning because I know that once my kids get up and once my husband's moving around and getting ready to leave and, and the house is kind of in motion, my priorities kind of get pushed back because those children need to be fed. They need to get ready for school. People need to get out the door and kind of the day begins. So I wake up early. Um, right now, I typically get up at around 530 in the morning, sometimes earlier. In the beginning, was it challenging? Yes, but now it's just part of my daily methods and it's a ritual for me. And so it's become a pattern and a habit. And for me, the house is quiet which I, I just, I love. I love to be in my own space and have it be quiet. I get my workout in. So in the morning, I need to wake up and move my body. It is the only way that I know how to process um, mentally, emotionally, how to get excited about something, how to ground myself. I have to move my body physically. It is a form of meditation for me. So if my days don't start with some type of movement, and it could just even be going for a walk. It could be doing yoga. It could be lying back and doing something restorative. Or it might be strength training. Or it could be a plyo workout or cardio, whatever it is. If I don't move, I just show up differently in everything I do. My patience isn't as good. My organization is not as good. I don't interact with others as well. And it's always in the back of my mind that I just kind of feel like I've got this fuzz all over my body inside and out that I need to just break up and, and get rid of that debris. So for me, I always have to start my day with exercise. Um, then I do a little bit of writing. I'm actually going to flip this so I can show you guys what my DMO is. So for me, my DMO is uh, living with more simplicity, ease, authenticity, love, joy, and passion blueprint for 2017. Um, and for me, it's not just about my Juice Plus business because, you know, Melissa said in her video the other week, 
um, or the beginning of this week, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Um, and I do believe that there is some truth to that. So for me, this is about, you know, spiritual relationships, connection, health, financial, and daydreaming. I think that all of them are equally important when you're trying to set a goal. If you get hyper-focused on just one approach to when you're trying to achieve something, that's not balance. That's the antithesis of balance. So I try and create a holistic approach to everything that I do. So my personal time, I wake around 5, 5.30. I drink water. I have it next to my bed as soon as I get up. I brush my teeth. I tongue scrape and I take my supplements. I then do my workout um, and I listen to podcasts when I train so that that's part of my personal development. I don't have to think to myself, oh, I've got to carve out time to exercise and to listen to a podcast. I do both at the same time and it helps to keep me really engaged and motivated. 6.45, I'm prepping the kids. I do breakfast lunches. I drink an elixir. I write in my five-minute journal um, and I get the kids off to school. Then I work on building my business. So around 8.30-ish, sometimes it's earlier, I do my daily Facebook and Instagram posts. I check in with my team and my clients, and I start the pace of my day. Um, that, usually I'm spending about an hour and a half to two and a half hours doing between that. I do a little bit of email check-in, focus on what needs to get done. Um, then around 11, I'll make a smoothie or have some eggs and some greens. And I do, I try and get really specific. It doesn't always happen this specifically, but if I just set the intention on the specificity of it, I feel more accomplished. Um, and then after that break until about 2.30, I'll host uh, weekly Facebook Lives in my private groups that I have. I get back to my emails and I do my writing. So I'm writing lots of content. Um, and I'll also be responding here and there to any leads or prospects that I've put information out to, whether it's about Juice Plus or it's about any of my online programs that I run. 2.30, I take another quick break. I walk the dog and pick up the kids from the bus. And then from 3 until 5.30, I have tried to get work done in this time and it's insane. It's crazy for my kids, it's not a good energy. Uh, you know, dinner takes me twice as long to make. It, I'm all over the place. So I just don't respond to anything for those two and a half hours. I spend time with the kids, we get homework done, everybody has a snack, I throw the music on, I prep dinner, and we have our family meal. Um, after that, it depends on what's going on. So there could be hockey, there could be dance, um, I could be leading a workshop that night, so depending on what's happening there, um, either it's a night of chilling out or if the kids are off doing something, then I may go back and do a little bit more work. Um, between 8 and 8.45, we're prepping those little monkeys to get off to bed. 9 o'clock, I do team meetings um, with a lot of you guys, uh, one to two nights per week, depending if I can get into the Monday evening one. I get myself ready for bed. So for me, it's not, um, you know, around 9, oftentimes I'm still online, but I'm I'm energetically trying to pull back from how much I'm committing myself to at night. So I create my daily method of operations on a Friday. The end of the week, so today I sit down, I look at the week that's happened, I prep my next week based on that. So I do it on a Friday so that I can move into the weekend with a clear head. So my DMO method on Fridays is a brain dump. Um, you know, I, I write a ton. I've got, you know, one of my journals that's here next to me and I just throw all out everything that worked really well or that didn't work well, what it is I've got to do, and then I start to put it into motion um, and I transfer it into my passion planner and I write out what it is that I've got to get done. Um, I try and be asleep every night by 10 to 10.30 because it's really challenging to be running a successful business um, and a successful body in life if you're exhausted. And then my monthly intentions, I only respond to emails one to two times a day for 15 minute chunks. Um, five times a week I cook homemade meals, one to two times a week I attend a class that's just for me, uh, once a week my husband and I have a date night, once a month we host a dinner party or go out with friends, and once a month I book myself something indulgent like a massage, an osteo session, or a facial. Now how I actually run my business is that in any of these things, so if I'm going to yoga class, I'm always talking to people about you know what we do to take care of our bodies. When my husband and I go out, we're talking about how can we get ourselves out socially with other groups of people that are involved in this. Um, and then when I do, uh, when we have people over to our house, we're, you know, they see my Juice Plus that's out, they see the lifestyle that, that we live. And so that's really great because it helps to create the conversation. Um, yeah, so that for me, that's kind of how I, I flow through my, my days and my routines, but I don't put the pressure on myself to 
feel like I had failed if for some reason the day didn't plan um, or go as exactly planned. So I hope that that helps to kind of shed some light. Um, you know, all of us are going to have a different approach to our daily method. When my business coach sent me the template, it looked nothing like what I created. And, you know, for me, there's different, um, you know, I don't know if any of you ever do like strength finders or if you've ever looked at um, Gretchen Rubin's kind of classifications of who you are. Like, I'm a rebel and I just don't resist it anymore. So if someone tells me to do it this way, I'll take that information. But then I'm like, I always have to put a twist on it. I don't know why. It's just who I am. So I just don't resist it anymore. So the information, take the information that I've said to you, but figure it out in your own way so that when you read it, you don't feel like you're reading someone else's plan with your kids' names in it and your schedule in it. You feel like you've created something that really represents who you are and all the things that matter the most. So I want your Juice Plus business to matter to you. I want all of you to achieve your goals and hit them. I want to hit them. I've got some goals as well too. But it has to fit into the mold and align with all the other parts of you that you want to work on and work towards creating you know, that best life. And ultimately, we're trying to do this with more simplicity and more ease. That's the goal in everything. So have an awesome rest of your day. Share this with your teams. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, let me know and uh, get working. Have a great day, guys.